particularly pleased to be joined by one of the signatories to, to the letter, uh, Lord Wolfson, um, who co-signed the letter to, to Ofcom yesterday. The case you were making was that the BBC has not shied away from referring to terrorists in the past. Why should it make an exception for Israel? Well, that's right. I mean, our case really rests on three legs. There are three parts of it. First of all, as you said in your introduction, just the normal use of English language. The word terrorism is the word which would be used to describe what happened on Saturday. Second, as a matter of English law, Hamas is a terrorist organisation. They are proscribed as a matter of law here. Support for them is illegal. And I hope, actually, that the police will be stronger in, uh, in dealing with uh, pro-Hamas uh, rallies, I'm afraid, which we've seen. The third point is, as you say, the BBC has used the word in other contexts. Uh, you mentioned IRA, also Al-Qaeda. It called the terrorist attacks in Paris, in the nightclub, a terrorist attack, which it undoubtedly was. And the question which we are left with, and which was the basis of our uh, letter to Ofcom, is why is this different? Is there a broader point here that the um, wokerati, for want of a better term, seem to think of Israel as being different. So the BBC won't say terrorism, Wembley won't light up the arch, um, Black Lives Matter has been very wishy-washy in its statements about what has happened, that there is a, a woke reluctance to defend Israel when Israel is attacked. I don't think Black Lives Matter has been wishy-washy at all. I think Black Lives Matter has been very clear in its support for what happened uh, on Saturday, I'm afraid. Um, I'm, what's happened over the last 72 hours is that people have shown their true colours. We have seen tremendous support, both for Israel and for the Jewish community here, as you say, from His Majesty the King at the top, uh, through uh, the Prince, Prince and Princess of Wales, uh, the Prime Minister. I'm a Tory peer, but I will say that Keir Starmer has been resolute on this issue as well. Ed Davey has given some very good statements, a cross-political stance. So we've seen a lot of support. But we've also seen people who should be speaking out. Why? Because they spoke out in other contexts. And that's the point. It's the difference in treatment which concerns so many of us. And that's really interesting, isn't it? Because you don't expect people to tweet on everything. It's not compulsory to put your view on every subject. But there are some notable celebrities and organisations who put their views out on everything who are resoundingly silent. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, Gary Lineker, for example, if I can pick on him, uh, he uh, drew a lot of publicity when he compared the government's immigration policy to 1930s Germany. Well, what happened in Israel on Saturday was 1940s Germany. More Jews were killed on Saturday, deliberately, than on any day since the Holocaust. As far as I know, the only thing Gary Lineker has so far tweeted about is to applaud the BBC's stance uh, in not calling Hamas terrorists. Which is absolutely extraordinary from somebody who normally fills the airway with his view on anything and everything. Well, I'm sure he's been extremely busy on other things and he hasn't managed to get round to condemning unambiguously a terrorist atrocity. And with the BBC, John Simpson, one of its most distinguished former foreign co correspondent, um, has said um, in his tweet that he thinks that the BBC is right. He carries a lot of weight, distinguished figure. Do you think the BBC has to separate itself from the British st state? We've put, we've put the tweet up for people to read um, on, on the screen. Do you think he's right that the BBC must always be even more impartial than anybody else? I don't think the BBC should be taking its instructions from the government or the state. I like the fact that the BBC is editorially independent. But if we're going to have a state broadcaster for which we all have to pay, the least we can expect is that it abides by what I would call moral norms. It calls things what they are. And what John Simpson didn't deal with in his tweet was the fact that the BBC and so many other context, as we've discussed just now, has used the word terrorism. I mean, what's clear is that the BBC guidelines do not preclude the use of the word terrorism. Roger Mosey, the former head of BBC Television News, made that very clear in an article in The Guardian. But also that the BBC guidelines, they are written by the BBC to have um, practical day-to-day -day effect, and if there is an exceptional circumstance, they're only guidelines. Well, absolutely. But I would say this isn't even an exceptional circumstance. No, no, it's obvious. It, it, it's absolutely obvious. And, and to come to, to Wembley, Wembley isn't going to light up the arch. It says that um, it will have a minute's silence. 
Again, that's different behaviour from how Wembley normally behaves, isn't it? And that's the problem. It's not uh, that football should be political, because perhaps it would be best if it weren't at all, but that it should be consistent. Well, I think, I mean, I declare my interest. I'm the chair of the Football Regulatory Authority, which is a committee of the FA. I think sport has really two choices. It can either totally stay out of politics or it can deal, deal in politics. Now, what the FA has done is, uh, in 2016, after a terrorist attack in Turkey, it lit the arch. In 2015, after the massacre in a nightclub in Paris, it lit the arch. And in fact, before every next Premier League game, the Marseillaise was played at every ground. After this terrorist attack, when party goers, festival goers, were mowed down in their hundreds, all of a sudden we're, we're told no lighting of the arch, we'll wear a black armband and have a minute silence. My concern is, again, why the difference in treatment? The inconsistency. And the English football team took the knee and joined in with whole Black Lives Matter uh, approach um, during whatever football championship it was playing a couple of years ago. Well, I think what we have to do is we have to decide, do we mean what we say or are we virtue signalling? And if we mean what we say, we have to continue to do it even when it's tough. Now, I appreciate the FA may be concerned about security implications. Although I should say the security implications don't come from the Gold is Green Bridge Club. <laughs> but if we want to fight terror as a society, we need to be resolute about it. And that means not giving okay. in. Is there something more sinister about this? Is there um, implicit anti-Semitism in the unwillingness to condemn terrorist attacks on Israel that on any other country would be condemned more forthrightly? Well, I'm always very careful uh, not to throw about the charge of anti-Semitism. Uh, what I would hope is that the FA come out and explain very clearly what they haven't yet explained, which is this. What is the difference between the terrorist attack in Turkey and the terrorist attack in Paris on the one hand and the terrorist attack in Israel on the other? It's that explanation which I'm hoping that the FA will provide, and they have not yet provided. And the BBC has, of course, made a statement, which I can read out. It says, the BBC is editorially independent. Our role is to explain precisely what is happening so that the public can make their own judgments. Our long-standing position, including during previous conflicts between Israel and Hamas in Gaza, has been that we do not use the term terrorist without attribution in line with the BBC's editorial guidelines. Um, well, you can make of that what you will. It'll be very interesting to see what Ofcom has to say, and I hope they respond to you very quickly. Well, I, I hope they do as well, and um, obviously if there are any substantive developments, I'm sure they'll make their way uh, onto the news and onto your programme. Well, let's hope so. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining me, Lord Wolfson.